Welcome to Credit Matters. I'm Mike Skirbo, Standard & Poor's Corporate Ratings Group. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the retail sector. I'm joined by Jerry Hirschberg, who's a Senior Director and Analytic Manager of the retail team based here in New York. Jerry, thanks for joining and welcome back. Thank you, Mike. It's good to be here again. So it seems as if stores, shopping malls seem to be, seem to be crowded. Uh, how, how are retailers doing? Well, yeah, they, they, there's a lot more people in the malls and in stores today than before. Um, I'd probably say retailers are doing better, mm -hmm. but I certainly wouldn't call it a buoyant business. And you know, I think the sad truth is that we're probably not going to get back to something that's really vibrant in retail for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think there are six good reasons for that. You know, the most important, of course, is that the consumer is, is hurting, still hurting. Uh, from several years ago when home values decreased, uh, the consumer is still basically unemployed. You know, the unemployment rate is still over 9%. Sure. It doesn't seem to be moving from that spot. We've seen inflation this year in gasoline and food and clothing, and there's just a lot of still, a lot of general uncertainty by the consumer. So the consumer's confidence is pretty well shot, and when consumer confidence shot is shot, uh, he or she is not going to go into the stores to buy a lot of stuff. So, you know, on the other hand, uh, sales in most sectors are up, is, is up this year. Uh, discounters, off-pricers, and luxury retailers, bel believe it or not, are leading the way as they did last year and the year before. Um, inventories are well controlled by retailers, so they haven't gone out and really bought a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, the old thinking was, stack it high and watch it fly, but that's really not holding true anymore. They've all done a very good job in cutting costs. I'm not sure if they had to, that there's a lot more in the way for them to cut. You know, but, but overall, retail is, is having a generally good year this year, um, but we're not going to see the vibrant type of sales increases and margin expansion that we did some years ago. Sure, sure. Okay, l l how, about, how about back to school? Back to school season is upon us now, or pre uh, almost probably done by now. How did that shape up? Well, so back to school is is pretty much over, Mike. Mm -hmm. You're right. Um, we like to call it back to school, back to work. You know, the, the kids are coming back to school. The parents have already bought them their clothing. Um, you know, the moms have been pretty careful about what they're buying. They, you know, they're they're buying new stuff for the kids and they're supplying them for school. Mm -hmm but they're not going out and buying as many new things, or they're spending less on different items. So, you know, it's been an okay season for back to school, maybe up a couple of percent from last year. Um, again, you know, they're, the retailers are not standing up and shouting about back to school. Sure. Um, they've had pretty good weather across the country for back to school. Sometimes retailers, you know, they'll complain about, about weather, that it wasn't conducive for, for selling, but it's been, it's been a good season for back to school in terms of weather. How about look, looking forward to, to the holiday season? Well, 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 what's our expectation yeah. there? Well, back to school traditionally is a harbinger for how retailers will do for uh, the, the holiday, but also for Halloween. You know, Halloween is the second largest selling holiday season of the year. Um, so, you know, I, I would probably say that the holiday will be, will be okay this year. Um, maybe up 2% or so. Uh, it surprised us last year. Uh, on the upside, it was probably up something over 5%, and we and most other people were looking at something like maybe 2 or 3%. It did better than last year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but there are some, some concerns for the holiday. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the consumer is still feeling pressured. Uh, the amount of discretionary income that, that they have is not, is not uh, growing at all. Um, and I think consumers will be finding higher prices in the stores for the holiday. Uh, cotton prices are, are way up, so apparel prices go, going to be up. And the same with clothing that's made from synthetics. Mm -hmm. um, so th those will be problems as to whether retailers can pass along those costs. You know, the consumers are out there willing to spend, but they're not going to go overboard. Um, so like I said, yeah, I think we can see the holiday up by a couple of percent, but in this high unemployment uh, environment, and a go-nowhere economy, I think that gains will tend to be more muted than we would uh, see in a very vibrant economy. Sure. How about the recent 
the recent volatility in the, in the stock market. Well, so that, that's been scary. You know, uh, the last month has been really dismal. It basically wiped out all the gains that we had seen for the whole year. Uh, it sort of felt like it did back in 2000 and 2008, uh, but of course there's no financial crisis now, and we've seen some pretty nice rallies. So, uh, you know, I think if what, ha what happened uh, a few weeks ago continued where the market was down three, four, five hundred every single day, then we would be back at our desks redoing our assumptions for sales and margins uh, uh, for, the, for the year. Um, you know, and I'm sure that the people at Neiman Marcus and Sachs were really worried about what was going on because uh, luxury retailing really suffered during the last recession. Um, uh, it wasn't so much the recession, but the plunge in the stock market. So when, when Apple and people lose value in, in their holdings, they, t they tend to sit on their hands and not go shopping anymore. Sure. No, fair enough. Um, maybe one, one last question for you, Jerry. Maybe, maybe pull all this together, talk a little bit about ratings, what our expectations are on, on, on our retail retailers. All right. So it's, it's, it's been a very active year for rating changes in the retail sector. We've changed 56 ratings so far this year. Uh, that compares with 49 a year ago. So a lot more volatility in rating changes. Downgrades are leading upgrades by about a 20% margin. Um, Compare that in 2010 at the same time when upgrades were actually 40% more than downgrades. Now, that was highly unusual. So I'd say that we're a lot more back to the norm this year. So, you know, a, a big turnaround in the, in the direction of ratings. More down than up, mm -hmm. but more down than up is typical. Um, on the plus side, though, we upgraded a lot of department stores so far this year. And in fact, we returned Macy's back to investment grade. Uh, we've had four Chapter 11s so far this year. Uh, that's the same number that we actually had for all of 2010. Are we looking for any more? I suppose one or two more could pop up by the end of the year. Uh, you know, I think if we, if we use ratings outlooks as a guide, we should be seeing more downs than ups anyway. Uh, we have, um, if, if you look at the amount of negative outlooks compared to positives in the mm -hmm. retail sector, there is a 60% more with a negative outlook than a, a positive outlook. So that would sort of tell somebody that chances are there will be a continuance of more downgrades and upgrades in 2011 and again in 2012. Well, excellent. Uh, Jerry, thanks for joining. It's always nice to be here, Mike. Thank you. We'll see you again next time.